Ghana and Spain have signed a 30 million cities agreement to train young entrepreneurs. Over 2,000 entrepreneurs are expected to benefit from an exchange program in Spain come March 2019. Charles Aite has more. Young and budding entrepreneurs engage in exchange programs in Spain for March 2019. Speaking to Joy Business, Sector Minister Mohamed Awal stated the agreement will see over 2,000 young entrepreneurs benefit from the program. The business school, that's why they are here. They have long history of coaching, training, and monitoring. So it's a partnership between us, the embassy, and this uh, Casa and Exxon, our embassy in, 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 in Spain, and the University of Ghana School. So they will do monitoring alongside the ministry, making sure that there's a monthly quarter reporting to ensure that what our plan has been planned is well executed. On her part, the Spanish ambassador to Ghana, Alicia Rico, expressed confidence in the impact this agreement would have on job creation and entrepreneurship. In an interview with Joy Business, Alicia stated that the Spanish government stands committed to be one of Ghana's leading economic partners. And it is to offer training and for um, entrepreneurs to set up businesses and to look for adequate financing. And so with this cooperation, we want to contribute to the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda and um, the setting up of businesses, creating jobs and generating wealth, I think is one of the priorities. And Ghana has a very, uh, very entrepreneurial spirit especially among the youth, and I think this will benefit the, um, the country. And it's particularly because we are going to train trainers. So these trainers will be able to train many more entrepreneurs here in Ghana. The Institute of Creation and Development of Enterprise Inside Foundation is an institution of the Chambers of Commerce with headquarters in Madrid, Spain. The parties seek to boost and encourage the participation of young people, workers and unemployed individuals in programs that contribute to their training and professional development. City authorities in Kumasi have begun the verification and validation of traders at the KDTR markets on Wednesday. The move is to pave way for the redevelopment of the KDTR market to ensure affected traders get what is due them. The KDTR market, which was previously um, having uh, housing over 4,000 units of shops, is expected to now accommodate over 1,000 traders after the redevelopment. The Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly has set up an 11-member committee to oversee the process of verification and validation of traders who once were trading at the KJTR bus terminal. The move follows a hint by KME officials that the distribution of shops at the KJTR terminal and market will be done anytime soon. City Mayor Osei BNP says traders who were moved to Adeshe and Achamfor markets will be served first. He spoke to the media after a sensitization program with traders at the KJTR markets. Verification and validation exercise is going to establish the real owners of the people who were at KJTR. And in prioritization, those at KJTR who were relocated to HM4 and Adishia market are the people who will be validated first. And after they have been validated and being shown where they will be moving to. Then we will move to the next area, which is the central market. We will do the verification and validation and move them also to the current KGTR. And after moving them, then we will have an empty place. After having the empty place, we will then give that place to the contractor to do the demolition and start the second phase. Committee Chair. Nana Ajenim Boateng Amoma Hene says there is no politicization of the process. He adds that this will pave way for the second phase of the KJTR Central Market Redevelopment Project. So let's assume that there is this ex-party man who thinks he can get it now. 
The question is how come? Because it's a biometric registration and that has been authenticated. So even the server is not in Kumasi, let alone for one to get into that server. If you come and we assess and you check your name, for instance, I come as Nana Jenin Boate. You can have Nana Jenin Boate's 20. But then Nana Jenin Boate of what telephone number? And that telephone number will prop and that server is in Accra will come with your picture. So even if you can, we would have even stolen the name or you have any info as to have come. The picture before the server in the world would know that you are not the person sitting there. Meanwhile, leadership of the Kidetia traders want authorities to ensure the rightful owners of the shops get their due. Andrew Spoby, a spokesperson. Um. So as far as we are concerned, we need our stores back. And we have been made to know that our stores will be given to us. This is all what we need. We only pray that during the validation, they must do well to avoid technicalities. We know our members. So the number of stores, in fact, they have the soft copy at their center. So we don't want a situation where everybody will be what a sad line when it comes to the validation process. So we will be around to check and make sure that each and every person who has shop at KJTR during, before, uh, what do you call it? Uh, construction. Before the construction, will be made to get its shop. Prince Apia, reporting. So the exercise actually started today in Kumasi and our correspondent Erastus Asari has been following up for us and has the rest of the story. So we have gathered here because of one major reason, and that is the Kumasi Central Market uh, Modern Market Project, uh, which can take more than 30,000 uh, traders and, and, and tenants that have so much space. Now, in 2015, registration was done for some 29,029 people who were trading at the Kejitia Central Market area before its demolition to pave way for this modern project. Now, in 2018, as we speak, the project is almost completed, and very soon, authorities intend to commission it before Christmas. Now, what we are doing here, the exercise that is taking place is the validation exercise. It is to ensure that people who were registered in 2015 still have their names captured uh, within the KMA database to be allocated spaces. Now, they are entering the books, people bring their letters of registration, they check through the books to see if your name is there. If your name is there, then uh, you'll be assured that you'll be allocated space at the new uh, modern market. Now, the registration back then was done uh, with the names of how they were seated at the KJTR area. Now, we have L ship A and B, we have A, B, we have C, we have MLS, we have TSS, MR, KCB, KC, PTC, KSC, and KS. Now, today, they are doing validation for only L ship A and B people, which number about 200 people. So Local content participation should be a priority in revamping the country's railway sector. That's according to an expert. Addressing the media at a public lecture on industrialization, director of the Institute of Infrastructure Development, Charles Boachi, said proper assessment of the project should lead to some 80% local participation, which will include sourcing of raw materials. Over the years, Ghana's railway sector has largely been relegated to the background despite the fact that this is a major source of transport for industrial development. It is estimated that the government will require $7 billion to revive the railway sector in Ghana. Government's quest to revamp the sector has caught the attention of some foreign investors. It is for this reason that the director of the Institute for Infrastructure Development, Charles Boache, is urging government to utilize the vast raw materials available in the country. The track infrastructure is largely about uh, quarrying materials, it's largely about granite, it's largely about laterite, formation, ballast, slippers. These are all materials that can be pr 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 produced here. When we did the weighting, for we, 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 we broke them down 
and the railway sector, we broke them down, track infrastructure and signal and telecommunication and buildings, that's the, term, the terminals, the stations. We realize that uh, we can uh, demand as much as 80% as local content. I think we haven't utilized the entire uh, design and development chain. You see, uh, development chain uh, involves doing feasibility, and then planning and, and then designing. Meanwhile, Mr. Boati also spoke about the need to develop a state credit system to resuscitate the industrial sector. The industrial sector is being weakened and it's, it's about time we find a means of reviving the sector because that is where uh, wealth can be created. Yeah, so generally, uh, there's a lot of things that we can do we, 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 uh, basically to add value to uh, minerals and we, we went through the value addition processes and we have to uh, also create credit system. It's not all about money. It's not about money at all. It's about ideas, it's about strategies and if we focus we have a good plan we'll be able to achieve it. Charles Boachie spoke to the media at a public lecture on creating rapid industrialization, employment opportunities and a stimulus for the Ghanaian economy. Time now to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll be exploring the possible impact of the trade war between China and the United States on Ghana. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Business Live, to our main story tonight. So if you were afraid of calling it a trade war, now you can. This is because the trade battle between the United States and China is getting worse by the day with both countries imposing trade sanctions and restrictions. But as we await the winner of this very war, how is the development likely to impact on Africa, especially Ghana? Joining me via phone is a trade expert, Richard Ampabin, to talk about the development. Thanks so much for joining us, sir. Thank you very much, my sister. So there have been tariffs and counter-tariffs imposed by both countries. What does this really mean for both countries? Well, what it means simply is that there is a tough war on market. It has to do with you importing or exporting. That is what is happening between the United States and China. So um, what does this actually, the move actually mean for a country like Ghana? Because we heavily depend on these two countries uh, for assistance, aid, support, and even importation as well. Well, I would say that um, the ripple effect already we are feeling. It. it has to do with the strengthening of the dollar. You know, once America is putting tariffs on goods coming from China. What it means technically is that China don't bring your goods to America. Mm. Because if you do, chances are that those goods will be more expensive and Americans will not buy. Mm. And not only Americans. Every normal human being will not buy a good which is expensive than the alternate one which is cheap. Mm. So that is what it simply means. And trust me, currency has a direct correlation with trade. Okay. Once the trade surplus is there for America, definitely currency will be strengthened and they will create more jobs. Mm. And that's exactly what is happening in the United States of America. Mm. I was asking about how um, a country like Ghana can um, actually, the, the trade war between the two countries, how we should actually position ourselves so we don't face the wrath of these two countries because no, we obviously um, depend. This is where, uh, when we take a target for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's approach to the then Cold War between the USSR and America, mm. the Cold War, he decided with this to be non-aligned. Mm. The best for us to do is to be non-aligned. Okay. We should continue trading with America and trade with China. We shouldn't take sides. Mm. If we do, we will be missed out in the cross mm. That That brings the question as to whether we should be reinforcing the need for uh, an intra-African trade. 
Sorry? I'm asking whether this should be a wake-up call for us to reinforce an intra-African trade. Oh, that one I had already explained to you. Mm. Why do you think America will be moving out of the um, trade block? You see, what we need to do is to add the WTO tariff regime mm. and also start to say that Ghana fed. Okay. If we did that, definitely we are going to turn the skills to our advantage. That's why some of us believe strongly in food for planting for food and jobs. Mm. This is the biggest uh, breakthrough if we were to ask the president expressed it in his uh, State of the Nation address. Okay. But I'm afraid the way we are doing it, I'm not satisfied. All right. Because we needed to put all our energies on this. And this is the policy which would take us out of unemployment, strengthen our city, and get us a trade problem. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Richard, and for being a trade relation expert. And we're talking about the trade war between China and the United States. And now, call it creepy or slimy, but this insert, the palm reveal, is the success story of Aspa Foods, um, commercially dealing in the rearing and the sale of these insects. Um, Sobita is making a living. Dare your taste buds tonight with this weekend's, um, this week's Joy Business One as we bring you the story of Sobita. After graduating from law school, one would have expected a young Canadian lady to enter her country's lucrative legal environment to practice. However, this 29-year-old brother chose an unusual path, feeding and breeding palm weevil lover known as Akokno among accounts in Ghana. After winning an entrepreneurship competition, the Halt Prize, Sobitha's passion to provide a clean source of protein led to Aspa Foods. The real mission of our company is to provide an alternative protein that is so much better for the planet and is great for people since insects are very nutritious. Um, particularly in Ghana, we're also able to provide a locally made and a desired uh, form of protein that really has the potential to um, reach every nook and cranny in the country. With one branch in the U.S. and another here in Ghana at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Aspa Foods cultivates the palm weevil lover, a popular source of protein known in Akan as Akokun. Research technician Nathaniel Samson explains better. In here, we start with the mating of a male and a female. And then this male and a female, they mate, give eggs, the eggs hatch, and then we give them agricultural byproducts. You got everything we use here as feed is coming from agricultural byproducts. Nothing here is chemical. Everything is organic. And once the larvae are of good size, after barely a month, they are then taken here and it's harvested. With this farm made up with covered plastic bowls, Sobitha saw and her team are able to produce about 100 kilos in the season. This, however, leaves her with a challenge of dealing with so much fresh lava. Our biggest challenge currently uh, revolves around logistics and supply chain here in Ghana. We currently sell a completely fresh and perishable product, and so that is a um, timeline to get to market that needs to be managed quite tightly and quite effectively. However, she's soon to overcome the challenge through a partnership with the Department of Food Science and Food Technology to develop ways to preserve the lava. Uh, 
Um, we're also looking at other forms of processing, such as drying it or um, adding it to other foods. So the possibilities are really endless when it comes to edible insects um, and the ways that we can have it be available for people because it is so nutritious. So Bitha had little doubts about her business venture as she knew the demand for protein would be high. For her, the reviews have been great and this gives her business more hope. Um, people are so excited to be able to get this all year round um, and to be able to get it and be sure of how hygienically it was produced and in what controlled conditions it was produced and not have the question of where exactly did it come from. Go on and take a bite and enjoy a mouthful of the sumptuous sauce of protein with any preferred dish of your choice. Mm, a cocoon with Ghana jollof. How does that sound like? Certainly not for me, but you may want to try it. But on that note, we wrap up on Business Live tonight. My name is Sandra Esenamapene. For more news, do log on to myjoonline.com forward slash business. Thanks for watching.